and welcome back to another episode of the Worst Possible Commander Show. It's me, it's Shay, and I'm here with my friends, CGB. Hello. Gina. Hi. Special guest, amazing, <laughs> and Ben. Hello. Um, as always, today's show is sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com. Be sure to use promo code WORST at checkout to get a discount on all your cool stuff. So today for the show, we are playing Commanders from the new set, March of the Machine, Aftermath. Aftermath. Oh, thank you for that. That was You're welcome. amazing. Really getting in the vibe. Mm -hmm. Getting in the vibe. Um, and so as always for the show, we start off by talking about the worst possible thing our deck can do. This is our version of the Rule Zero. And to start us off... CGB, why don't you tell us what you're playing today and the worst possible thing you're going to do to us. Okay, it's me, it's CGB, and today I'm playing Narsa Enlightened Exile. This is a cool Jeskai commander, poor Narset. She's lost her spark. She's exiled from the dragon world. She's trying to find her way. So I thought I she could use a pick-me-up. So this is a little love letter to Narset. There's a whole bunch of Narset cards and Jeskai cards from the Tarkir era of standard in the deck. I've got at least three different Narsets in there. Just really tell her the story of all the cool stuff that she's done and hopefully let her just smack my opponents around a little bit. As far as mechanically, Narset does a cool thing where she exiles a card from anyone's graveyard, a non-creature, non-land card, and I may cast it for free. It has to have power less than Narset's power, but she gives all the creatures I control, including herself, prowess, so it's not too hard to build her power up. The coolest card I can cast this way that i found so far is Delay Blast Fireball. Thank you to everybody who pointed out that that should have done more damage in a recent <laughs> video we made. That's cool. Now that I know how that works, I want to cast this from exile using Narset and deal five damage to to all your stuff and your faces and then slap you for a lot of damage with prowess. So it's gonna be a really fun kind of prowess, almost spell slingery, but mostly a lot of cool Jeskai cards pile. So we've got our Blake for a week over here. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually two weeks, but don't worry everybody, Blake is coming back. He's traveling for work. He's being big, he's being big shot Mr. Business. So mm -hmm. uh, give it up for Mr. B Business in the comments if you miss Blake. But Gina, hi. Hi. What do you got? I have Samut, Vizier of Noctamun. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Noctamun? Noctamun. Yeah, I think so. Should have right. practiced. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is a human warrior cleric. And what's really cool is uh, there's first strike vigilance and haste. But every time a creature enters the battlefield and gets to do combat damage right away, I get to draw a card. So I'm gonna have a lot of things that give my creatures haste so that I can punch and draw all game long. And my worst possible is I have ways to goad. And if I goad the things, then they don't have to attack me, which makes it really easy for my combat damage to get through. And I have a hoof. Okay, what are the cards you're using to goad? Oh, uh, the goading cards are Disrupt uh, Decorum, Goad All Creatures You Don't Control, <laughs> and the other one is Spectacular Showdown. Put a double strike counter on a target creature and goad each creature that had a double strike counter put on it this way, and I can overload this so that it can go to all of the things. How exciting. And uh, what, how, what does Crater Hoof Behemoth do? I'm not sure. <laughs> Smash! <laughs> <laughs> so let me get this straight. You are going to give all your stuff haste so you can mm -hmm. punch and smash us. And draw cards. And draw cards. Yeah. And then also we're gonna be punching each other. Yeah, not me. But not you. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I think that's a pretty good plan. I don't, lo I don't love it for myself. I'm excited but, about um, it personally. Yeah, I'm happy for you. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Um, well, Ben, what have you brought us today? Oh man, five colors, I love it. I'm playing Niv-Mizzet Supreme, Dragon Avatar 5-5. Five five. Flying Hexproof from monocolored cards. Each instant and sorcery card in my graveyard that's exactly two mana, or two colors, my bad, has jump start, which means I can discard any card and cast it from my graveyard at its mana cost. So hopefully I do a lot of instants and sorceries uh, this game. I have a lot of uh, single target removal, so I can replay them from my graveyard, discarding another one. Anyway, my worst possible is Epic Experiment and Mizzix Mastery. If I'm able to do one of these, I'll just cast a bunch, either from the top of my library or from my graveyard without paying their mana costs. 
just cast big amounts of spells. Lots of spells. I'm going quantity over quality this game. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. I look forward to, to seeing all that happens. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, today I am playing Nashi Moon's Legacy. This is a rat shaman. I love it. Um, he's a 3-4 with Menace and Ward 1. Whenever Nashi Moon's Legacy attacks, exile up to one target legendary or rat card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy. Um, so this deck is all about filling both my graveyard and my opponent's graveyards to maybe cast some stuff and also get some uh, cool graveyard payoff. So I'm going to be filling the graveyards with Mesmeric Orb. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent's controller mills a card. Pretty bad for you guys. Mm. Uh, then there's also Sir Conrad the Grim, um, which he deals damage uh, whenever a creature enters the graveyard. Um, from anywhere other than the battlefield, and also when it leaves the graveyard, it deals a damage to each opponent. Mm. And then lastly, we have Rise of the Dark Realms, which says put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. So I'm, I'm, that's the worst possible, I think, is filling everybody's graveyards and then stealing all of your graveyard things. Would it be good if it came with a crater huff? Yes, it would be very <laughs> good. I mean, that would be... Top notch, supreme. So you didn't go the route of like a billion of the rats that you can have any number of. You went for like legendary grave value. Yes, exactly. Even though nothing against rats, but you know, I wanted to, to play with some other things today. All right, very cool. I look forward to seeing what happens this game. I think it's going to be an interesting one. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and shuffle up, get started. Let the nonsense begin. Okay, so uh, I won the die roll, so I will be going first. Draw for turn. We're gonna play a watery grave. It's gonna enter tapped, and then I'm gonna pass the CGB. Nice, I will draw and I'll play a glacial fortress tapped, pass to Gina. Draw. I will play a forest and I will tap the forest for a boreal druid. Then I'll pass. Cool. I'll draw for turn. Play a training center untapped. Tap it for a soul ring. Ah, oh man, sorry no. guys. Go ahead, Shay. <laughs> he doesn't sound sorry. I'll play an exotic orchard, which taps for green, cause Gina, and I'm gonna pay two for a secure a tribe elder. Steve. Steve is here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pass to you. All right, untap, draw. I will play Battlefield Forge. We'll tap two. I'll cast a Ledger Shredder. <laughs> then I'm done. Untap, draw. I will play a Mountain, and I will tap three to bring out my commander, Samut. All right, new card. What all does that do? First strike, Vigilance, Haste. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, if that creature entered the battlefield this turn, draw a card. Samut totally arrived here this turn. Oh wow. my gosh. Whoa. Oh boy. I'm going to attack Ben for two. Okay. You've got Vigilance on that uh, critter. Sure do. And I'll draw a card. And I pass the turn. All right, I'll untap, draw for turn. I will shock in a breeding pool, and I'll cast a Sky Shroud claim, getting two forests. Oh, that's a really good start. All right, I got Bayou and Savannah, and they enter untapped. Tap two for an Eladomri's call. Oh, sweet, that's your second spell, so it triggers my Ledger Shredder. Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. So I'll draw a card and discard a card. I'm gonna discard Narset Parter of Veils and put that in the graveyard and put a plus one, plus one counter on Ledger Shredder. Go ahead. Okay, I got a Jensen Carthalian Druid Exile. Okay. He's a creature. Oh, is that the one where if you cast a five color spell, you get an angel token? A uh, multicolored spell just in general. Mm -hmm. I, I think it has to have f be five colors to get an angel, right? 
Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. If I cast a multi-card spell, I scry one. Five colors of that, I get an angel with nice. Vigilance and Flying. And for five and tap, I can add Wooberg. Solid. He's a 2-2. Two -two. Well. And then I'm done. Your turn, Jay. All right. Untap. Draw. All right, I'm going to play a Shipwreck Marsh. Then I will pay three for an Out of the Tombs. Oh, I remember the last time you played this card. Yes, so it says at the beginning of your upkeep, put two Eon counters on Out of the Tombs, then mill cards equal to the number of Eon counters on it. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. If you can't, you lose the game. Then I'm going to pass. All right, I'll untap and draw. I'll play a Shivan Reef. All right, I am going to cast Ghostly Pilfer. There's a 2-1 spirit rogue, and whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, I draw a card. I can also make it unblockable by discarding a card, and also when it becomes untapped, I can pay two to draw a card. So, cool little card. Go ahead, Gina. That seems fine. Untap, draw. I'm going to play a Wooded Foothills. I'm going to pay a life and tap it to go get a land. It goes to the graveyard and I came back with a taiga. I'm going to pay two for Arcane Signet and I'm going to pay two for Rampant Growth. More ramps? <laughs> Jeez. So I have a Ledger Shredder trigger. So I'm going to connive, I'm going to draw a card and I will discard Jeskai Elder. So that will put a plus one, plus one counter on the Ledger Shredder. Go ahead and Rampantly Growth. I chose a mountain. All right, that's going to enter the battlefield tapped. I'm also going to tap the Arcane Signet for the Findhorn Elves. More ramp. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. I just want to be ready for anything. I guess so. So I can play real good magic. All right, uh, I feel like I want to attack because it's fun. Um, <laughs> I'm going to attack Ben, who doesn't mind when I attack him. Of course. You know. As long <laughs> as I don't get you. as long as I don't get the twenty one commander damage from your two three. <laughs> that would be really time consuming. Yes. <laughs> I pass the turn. Draw for turn. I'm gonna play a pillar of the Paroons. I add one mana of any color, spend this only to cast multicolored spells. I'm gonna play Urban Evolution. Draw three, play an additional land this turn. Ooh, that sounds fun. I will play a tundra as my additional land. I'm gonna play Decimate. What? No! Okay, what are the targets? My target is the Out of the Tomb. Because oh! I know how powerful that is from yeah. the last game it was in. Yeah. I'm gonna target, I, I think it has to be Samut. You've just been hitting me. I know I was, I'm not scared, so I'm not worried. Just needs to leave. Okay, what else? I'll also target the Arcane Signet. Yep, that's the artifact. And the this is the painful one, guys, the land. I'm sorry, Gina, but we've both ramped. They haven't. Oh, you're So I'm going right. to blow up a mountain of yours. Okay. I have a response. Oh, okay. You do? Um, what do you have? I'm interested in playing the deflecting swap. Oh, oh my. <laughs> which I can play without its mana cost because I have my commander right now. You may choose new targets wow. for target spell. Or, oh, my goodness. So I have a ledger shredder trigger because that was Ben's second... Uh, spell um but you put this on top of it that's okay uh but yeah go i guess ben unless you have a response i do not gina's no. going to retarget <laughs> with the decimate let me oh read this God. to be sure spicy yeah help me figure out what i'm allowed to do destroy target okay it can be any target it's not opponent thing it's target artifact target creature target enchantment and target land you have to hit one of each Okay, well, um, I'm fine with the, your choice over okay, here that's yeah. not on my board. Right. We so, can, the out Not out worry of the about tombs. that right now. But I'm not oh, feeling yeah. the targets on my own board. <laughs> yeah, which were the other three? <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, the new target creature is going to be the Ledger Shredder. Mm. The new target artifact is going to be the Soul Ring. I saw that. And the new target land. I only what, have three. That, what are you talking what's about? What's that pillar of, of what? Of what? A Paroons. <laughs> that sounds fancy. I target it is, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh, okay. Um, uh, no responses. No. Okay. Ledger Shredder is going to die. Mm. All right. Uh, I still have the Ledger Shredder trigger that resolves. So I still connive. So I draw and I discard. I'll discard the Sundown Pass. All right, Ben, it's still your turn. It's still your turn. 
So I guess I played a four mana spell just to blow up three of my mana producing <laughs> burn. <laughs> Without you paying any mana, Gina, jeez. Just Sometimes lucky, I guess. It really do be like that. See, this is really why I stick to creatures. <laughs> not, it can go so wrong. Yeah. It can go so very wrong. Your turn, Jay. All right, I'm gonna play Field of the Dead, which enters tapped as my land for turn. We'll pay three for a Relic of Legends. Uh, so I'm gonna tap my Relic of Legends for black and cast Reanimate. Ooh, that kind of stealing. The dead kind. The dead it. kind. So put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. You lose life equal to its mana value. I think I want the Leggy Shreddy. You want the Leggy Shreddy? I want the Leggy Shreddy. Okay, uh, yeah, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. It's a good card. Cool. Game recognized game. Thank you, thank you. And I lose life equal to his mana value, so I'll lose two life. Okay, and my tribe elder is still chilling. I'm gonna pass to you, CGB. All right, untap, draw. All right, I'm gonna play a deserted beach, and I'm going to pay one life for a red mana from my battlefield forge going to 39, and bring out Narset, Enlightened Exile, she's here. Mm -hmm. And then I am going to, sorry, Ben, you're open, attack you with Ghostly Pilferer. Okay, one, right? Or two points. Two. Two oh, points. Man. All right. Two. Now I'm done. Untap. I will play an exotic orchard. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play Azuri's Predation. Uh, uh what? What that does is, for each creature your opponents control, create a 4-4 green Phyrexian beast creature token. Each of those tokens fights one of those creatures. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> joke's on you guys, I don't have creatures. <laughs> ben misses out. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, so there is a second to respond. I hope at the least you sack your elder before that fight. I am gonna, yeah, sack my secure tribe elder. Um, so that will happen, and then I'll go search my library for a basic land card. Bye, Steve. My beasts are going to be immediately attacking your creatures. Yep, they fight. So Narset will die, Ghostly Pilfer will die. Leggy Shreddy will die. They're all mine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel bad if Ben got completely left out. Ben, I'm attacking you for two. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That commander damage might get there. Yeah, <laughs> it's up to six now, yeah, so. Wow. <laughs> and now my turn is over. Um, and I grabbed a forest with the secure tribe elder, which will enter the battlefield tapped. All right, I'll untap. Draw for a turn. Ben, are you going to take vengeance on all this that's happening? Do you, you got something? I'm going to try to by casting my commander, <laughs> Niv Mizzet Supreme. Whoa. That Okay, that gives multicolored instants and sorceries jumpstart. Two color. Two color. Yes, specifically. And there's a decimate in your graveyard? Yes. Okay. Don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it got countered the first time I didn't get to use it. Or not countered, redirected, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> your turn, Shay. Okay, untap. Draw. So I am tapping seven mana for old stick fingers where X equals five. Okay, so how's this gonna work? Uh, whenever you cast this spell, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards. Put all creature cards revealed this way into your graveyard. Then put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Old stick fingers, power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. All right, go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna flip until I reveal five creature cards. One. Birdo. And we're going. <laughs> we're going. Okay, there's another one. Muldrotha. Okay. Sir Conrad. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bazani. Well, that's four, so I need one more. Okay, and then we have the Peregrine, Peregrine Dynamo? Yeah, the Peregrine Dynamo. Yes. Um, you had a Dryad Arbor, does that count? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought it oh, was. Oh, yeah. Arbor. Okay, so there's a Dryad Arbor in there, and that is a creature on its type. So that came before the Peregrine Dynamo. We'll just shuffle it back in. Yep. 
just put it in that pile and we'll just shuffle it all. Perfect. Okay, so I got my five creatures. These are gonna go to the graveyard and then this stack will get shuffled back into my library. All right, since we didn't quite uh, catch the Dryad Arbor when it first went by, we're just gonna shuffle it all back in instead of putting it on the bottom in a random order because we can't remember exactly how many cards we revealed. Mm -hmm. So uh, these go to the graveyard, these Shay will shuffle back in and then you'll have old stick fingers on the field. Yeah, perfect. Creatures are in the graveyard. I have six total creatures in there. So old stick fingers is a six, six. Okay, perfect. Now I pass to you, CGB. All right, untap all my lands and my nothing else, because that's going great. I'll play a Spire Bluff Canal tapped. I'll take one from Battlefield Forge again to create Jeskai mana and one. Play Whirlwind of Thought. Whenever I cast a non-creature spell, I draw a card. You guys remember this one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's no big deal, it's fine. Your turn, Gina. I will play Rockfall Veil. Yeah, how are you going to follow up the predation turn? <laughs> no, no, you don't. Don't do it. I'm going to play a really exciting Hajar loyal bodyguard. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, she had the oops, that's my crater hoof face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was bracing myself. Everything's fine. Everyone, it's, it's okay. I'm going to tap five for Return of the Wild Speaker. Ooh. I will get to draw... Four cards. That's a good reload. That was a good reload. I will tap my last two for Blade of Selves. It's equipment. Um, and we'll worry about what it does when I actually equip it to something. How about that? Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> I hear it's good. I hear it's it's a good probably card. fine. <laughs> so I'm going to oh. attack you with my beasts and Samut. Honey, please. <laughs> That's 14. It's a casual 14. Ouch. Yeah, and then she attacked me for 14, and we knew it was real love. Okay, <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, hey, someone else with commander damage from Gina other than me. Whoa. <laughs> and I will go down to 24, and two of that is commander damage. And with that, I'll pass the turn. Okay, I'll untap. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discard Azorius Charm using Niv-Mizzet Supreme's Jumpstart ability to cast... Urban Evolution from my graveyard. Oh, so, so good to cast two Urban Evolutions. Mm. Okay, I'll draw three and get to play an additional land this turn. You do have to pay the cost when you cast a Nimnus. Oh, yes, you? of course. Yes. <laughs> I haven't played a land this turn either yet, so I'll play Rejuvenating Springs for my first land drop and then Plateau for my second land drop. Does it exile when you jumpstart a card? I think it does. Uh, yes. Okay. I'll cast Jensen. Oh yeah, that, that card. That guy, yeah. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, scry one. If that spell was all colors, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. Uh, five and tap, add Wooberg. He's a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Okay, untap, draw. I'm gonna tap three for Necromancy. So Necromancy is an enchantment. It says you may choose to play Necromancy as an instant. If you do, bury it at the end of turn. That doesn't matter. When you play Necromancy, choose target creature card in any graveyard. When Necromancy comes into play, put that creature into play as though it were just played, and Necromancy becomes a creature enchantment that targets the creature. If oh. Necromancy leaves play, bury the creature. It's, it, it's a re it reanimates a thing. It's yeah. very wordy. Um, okay, so... When I play Necromancy, I'm going to target Muldrotha. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's good. I believe this has been updated to be an aura, so you can just put it on the Muldrotha. Oh, okay. So now I have Muldrotha, who says, During each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a permanent spell of each permanent type from your graveyard. Oh, boy. So what's in the graveyard? Okay. We well, got some critters. Yeah, there's there's definitely stuff. Oh, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> All from the tombs is in there. Okay, so I'm gonna start by paying three to cast Nashi. The Commander. Moon's Legacy, yes, welcome Commander. Then I am going to use the Relic of Legends ability to tap Nashi for a black and pay two more to cast Out of the Tombs. It's back. It's back. Mm. Using Muldrotha, yeah. And then Yes, using Meldrotha, I'm gonna tap for a green to cast the Secure Tribe Elder. Uh, that would take two mana. You are correct. So we'll put old stick fingers 
It's tapping as well. Using just... using the Relic of Legends, yep. Okay. Okay, so these are still in Graveyard. Yep. And how many creatures are in the Graveyard now? Four creatures in the Graveyard, which means Old Stick Fingers is a 4-4. Four, four. Yep, we'll, we'll update the sticky dice. That's all I got. Your turn, CGB. Okay, I hope I get to do something scarier than I've done so far. Untap, draw. All right, so I'll tap these four. Making just sky mana and one to cast Narset of the Ancient Way, because it's a Narset deck. And I'll draw a card with Whirlwind of Thought. So Narset of the Ancient Way is a Planeswalker. The plus one can gain me two life, and I can make some mana. Uh, I can only use it to cast non-creature spells. The minus two is what I'm actually going to use. I'm going to draw a card, and then I'm going to discard a card from my hand. Uh, it has to be a non-land card. Or, or no, when I do discard a non-land card, I deal damage equal to its mana cost to target creature or planeswalker. So, minus two, I draw a card. I'm going to discard Ovika Enigma Goliath, which is a seven mana flying Phyrexian Nightmare. Whoa. And I'm gonna deal seven damage to something. I'm gonna target Mildrotha. <gasps> Ow! Okay. I mean, you're just gonna play it again, but I'm at least gonna make you work for it a little. Yes, okay, and then the Necromancy goes away too. Yeah, the necromancy goes away. Okay. All right, I'm going to play a Rogren Triome tapped, and I'm done. Go ahead, Gina. Untap. I am going to tap five for Uncivil Unrest. Uh, Non-token creatures you control have Riot, so they'll enter the battlefield with my choice of a plus one, plus one counter, or haste. And um, if a creature I control with a plus one, plus one counter on it would deal damage, it would deal double that damage no. instead. Okay. Okay. Well, fortunately, nothing has a counter right now. Okay. I think I am going to pay for to equip the Blade of Selves to one of my beasts. All right. I'm going to go to combat now. Oh. Um, thank you, Shay, for this beast. Uh -huh. It's exactly what I pictured my Phyrexian beast to look like. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, I like it so much. I'm actually going to send it in your direction along with Hajar and Samut. Okay. And sure. when I do that, this is actually going to make two copies. One will attack CGB. One will attack Ben. And I'm also going to send these beasts at Ben. Okay, well I have some beast copies for you. They're beast nice. knots. All the all the hookup just to be attacked, huh, Shay? I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, anything before blocks, everybody? No, anything before blocks, Shay? No. I also have nothing before blocks, so who's got blocks, Ben? I will block one beast with Nimbus. Will it be the token beast that got myriaded, or will it be the beast uh, beast? Yeah, one of the beast beasts. Okay, cool. And then Shay, what are you blocking? I will block with my tribe elder, one of the beast beast. Okay. Uh, I have no blocks, so I just have to take it. So going back around, um, let's see. So Ben, you are going to take eight, because there's a beast and a fake beast hitting you, right? Yep. Going to 22, Shay is going to block, Shay blocked a beast, so then you have the Samut and the Hajar hitting you. Yep, and so that's a five, five damage, and then um, before damage on the Tribe Elder, I'm gonna sacrifice him. Yep, oh, that makes sense. I grabbed an island off the Tribe Elder, it's gonna enter tapped. And that triggers your Field of the Dead now, because now you have seven different lands, right? I believe so. Okay, so this is my Field of the Dead Zombie, and it does not enter tapped, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <'em. laughs> There's always somebody who thinks that enters tapped. Yeah. All right, so now the Myriad Beast token also hits me, so I take four. And you hit Ben, and you hit me with a creature that entered the battlefield this turn, so that's going to trigger your commander, Gina. So that's two card draws. Yay! And I believe after combat, the fake beast tokens go away, but keep those handy in case it comes up next turn. I'll just put them to the side. I think everything's fine. I think we did the thing. <laughs> and the last thing I'm going to do is play my land for turn. It is a stomping ground. I will play it tapped. And I pass the turn. All right, I'll untap. Play a containment construct Ooh. from Kamigawa, Kamigawa set. 
Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that card this turn. He's a 2-1. That's really good with Jumpstart. Oh, yeah. I'm going to play Faithless Mending. Faithful Mending, sorry. <laughs> Make up your mind. We are more Thank faithful. <laughs> I uh, gain two life, draw two cards, then discard two cards. Okay, I will discard a Goblin Electromancer and Simic Charm from the Faithful faithful Mending. <laughs> and I will ca exile them with Containment Contract to cast both of them this turn. That's really cool. So I'll cast the Goblin Electromancer. Okay. And so the sorceries cost one less to cast. And I get to scry off of Jensen. I will bottom that card. All right, I'll cast Simic Charm from Exile from Containment Construct. To bounce, I'll pick a return target creature to its owner's hand. And I will pick the equipped beast. All right, one less beast. One less beast. And I will also scry off of that. Bye, beastie. You have another one to equip it to. It'll, I think you'll be okay. I will bottom my scry from Jensen. I'm gonna go to combat. I'm gonna attack Gina with Niv Mizzet, five, five, flying. Oh, he's he's taking no more. He's yeah. getting in there. I'm gonna oh. kill you with Commander Dance. <laughs> I can't block it, so I'll take five. And then I'm done. Go ahead, Shay. Okay. On my upkeep, I have an out of the tombs trigger. Thank you. I will put two Eon counters on it, and now I will mill two cards. And finally, at long last. Got a Grimoire of the Dead and a Forest going into the graveyard. I'm going to go to combat. I am going to send Nashi Moon's Legacy to Gina. It's a 3-4 with Menace. And on attack, I can exile up to one target legendary or rat card from my graveyard and copy it, and I may cast the copy. What are you getting? I'm going to grab Sir Conrad. Ooh. I will take three commander damage. Correct. I'm going to pass to you, CGB. Hmm. How many cards you got? I have two cards in hand. Okay. All right. I am going to plus Narset for a blue mana. Go blue. And gain two life. And I'm going to use that mana and two colorless. And I'm going to cast Of One Mind. Uh, this lets me draw two cards. I'd like to pay only one mana for it, but I have no creatures on my battlefield. I'm also going to draw another card because of Whirlwind of Thought. So one from Whirlwind and then one and two. All right. I'll tap two for an Is It Signet. Trigger Whirlwind of Thought. Draw a card. Well, I'm going to play Sacred Foundry tapped, and I'm going to pass. Go ahead, Gina. I will untap all my things. All right, I'm going to tap three for an At Atalan Jackal. Okay, what does it do? It has Trample and Haste, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, I may search my library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, and shuffle. Okay, it does have Riot. Yes. Uh, since it already has haste, I'm going to give it a plus one counter. Seems really good. So now it deals double damage. Then I'm going to tap four more for a uh, very good squirrel. Toski, bearer of secrets. Ooh, okay. That's a good one too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Indestructible, attacks each combat if able, and whenever a creature I control does combat damage to a player, I could draw a card. So you've got uh, the choice of haste and a plus one, plus one counter on Toski. I want to give him haste. Okay, haste it is. I'll tap my remaining four and give the blade to the jackal. Ooh, baby. Oh, man. Scary. Then I move to combat. <laughs> uh, before you move to combat. Help, Shay. Shay, please, save us. I'm going to pay one to channel Besiju who endures, hoping to destroy your sword. Hoping to destroy the Blade of Selves? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, you can't counter a channel ability. So does that one resolve? I'm tapped out. Okay, uh, you do get to fetch a land that has a basic type and it enters untapped. So you get to go get a mountain or a forest. I got a forest. I'm going to send Hajar and the Jackal to Ben, and I'm going to send Samut, Toski, and the Beast to CGB. Ben? I have no blocks. Okay, uh, let's see. I think I'm also going to roll with no blocks on this one. So you're not attacking Narset, right? I'm not attacking Narset. Okay, and it's seven damage? 
Yes. All right. Uh, yep, it, it goes. So you are hitting with all of these. So Ben, take your uh, damage. Um, and you have triggers because what entered the battlefield this turn? Two creatures entered the battlefield this turn. They hit, so I get to draw two cards for that. For some moot, yep. Uh, and Toski, so everything that hits you get to draw a card. So that's draw five. Yay, one, <laughs> two, three, four. Five. And the jackal hit, so you get to search your library for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. You just cool. drew a full grip. Value. You know? <laughs> I'm going to discard two mountains. Yep. Now down to seven, pass the turn. I'll untap. Right, I'm gonna play gutter snipe. Ooh, somewhere Blake is happy. Yeah. Four for a storm kiln artist. Oh God! It's becoming a, it's becoming a spell uh, a spell slinger deck. That's the name of yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, great. That's bad. I will discard an underground sea with Niv Mizzet's jumpstart ability, reduced by Goblin Electromancer's instant and sorcery reduction, to cast a decimate. All right, you're going to declare the targets for that, but really quick, are you exiling the discarded land to a containment construct, or did you already play it? I already played my reliquary tower, so it will stay in the graveyard. Okay, targets for decimate. Okay, so my targets are creature, Sir Conrad, land is field of the dead. Artifact? Artifact is arcane signet, Gina. Mm -hmm. And uncivil unrest is enchantment. Okay, so you all will take two damage from Gutter Snipe. I will go to 13. 29. I'll 31. make a treasure token. I got you, bro. Just yeah. don't hurt me no more. I can't promise that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you. And I will scry one off of Jensen. And I'll keep that on top. Oh, no. All right, decimate targets are, it's now on the stack. Any responses? Shay. Yes, I would like to respond with Sir Conrad's ability. Tapping two for each player to put the top card of their library in the graveyard. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Did you like that scribe then? I did, you would have, you will like it too. All right, mine's Command Tower. Game Trail. Uh, I got a Nile. That is a creature. Yeah. I got a Shark Typhoon. <laughs> ah, I love it. Oh. Okay, um, so Sir Conrad, what happens when you flip a creature? Uh, one damage to each opponent. Okay, I go to 12. 28. And I go to 17. Okay, now, uh, are you going to do it again, Shay? You have the Relic of Legends. You can tap the Sir Conrad for mana if you wish. I would love to do it again. Yes. Everybody go again. Okay, I got a creature, Goldforged Thopterus. Birds of Paradise. I got a Time Wipe. And I got a Whisper Silk Cloak. So two creatures. Does that trigger twice? Um, it's whenever another creature is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield. So yeah, that's two more triggers, so we each take two except for Shay. I go to 10. 26. I go to 15. Bing bong. And then decimate, does it resolve now? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, that is Arcane Signet, Uncivil, Unrest, Sir Conrad, which was a copy. Mm -hmm. And so Sir Conrad stays exiled for good. And what was the last thing, the land? Field oh, of the Dead. Yes. Now Sir Conrad, the copy does go to the graveyard, but it says another creature. So that's not a damage. Okay. Old Stick Fingers is now a six. Okay, I'll go to combat. I'll swing Jensen at Narset and Niv Mizzet at Gina. Okay, big dragon. Well, I can't block it in the air, so I will take the damage. And I will drop Narset down to one loyalty. Thanks thanks for just letting her chill, Ben. I appreciate you. Yeah, I just didn't want you to get that minus two off. Your turn, Shay. I'm empty handed, by the way, guys. Okay. Untap. And I have an upkeep trigger on my out of the tombs. It gets two more eon counters. And now I will mill four. That's a creature. Okay. All right, one more creature. Yes, so one more creature entered, and we've got old stick fingers up to seven. Now I will draw for turn. All right, I'm gonna move to combat. I'm gonna send Nashi Moon's Legacy to Gina. 
Three, four. Menace. On attack, I get to exile up to one target legendary creature from my graveyard and copy it. So I'm going to choose Azani, Thousand-Eyed. Oh, the one that makes bugs. Yes. Okay, so when Azani enters, I create one, one black and green insect creature tokens for each creature card in the graveyard. Okay, so I have six creatures in the graveyard, which means I create six insects. And now Old Stick Fingers... Is that? Oh, yeah, that works. (laughs) So I will take three commander damage. Mm -hmm. I am going to pass the turn. Okay. All right, I feel like a lot of stuff is about to go down. This is very terrifying. I just want to do something cool with my commander before it's all over. So I'm going to plus Narset of the Ancient Way for one blue mana in the mana pool for non-creature spells. I'm going to gain two life. I'm going to tap six mana, and I'm going to cast my commander. Here is Narset, the Enlightened Exile. Then I'm going to use the blue in the mana pool and two others and just main phase it like nobody's business to fairy's protection. (laughs) (laughs) I just don't want any part of the next whatever's going on. So I'll draw a card from the whirlwind of thought. Then if Teferi's protection resolves until my next turn, my life total can't change. I got protection from everything. All my permanents be phased out. Bye 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 Go, Gina. Just go. <laughs> I'm not even here. Don't worry about nothing. None of this is here. Nothing. We're cool. <laughs> ben, did you only take three from this jackal that turn? It was this and this, right? But this oh, deals double damage. Right. Yeah, I did only take three from that. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, okay. Oh, so you should have three less life, Ben. Okay. Because of the jackals. Comments, we got it. We got it, okay? Down to 12. Under control. All right. I'm going to tap six and play Kolga and Yadaro, a legendary creature, ape, dinosaur, turtle. Yeah, that's the big one. <laughs> Quite the creature type, sir. When it enters the battlefield, I can choose one. It can have uh, trample and haste until end of turn, or it can fight a target creature I don't control. I would like it to fight them sticks. <laughs> them stick fingies? <laughs> them stick fingies. Fight them sticks. <laughs> It's, a, it's an old, uh, old classic showdown we've got here between Ape, old stick dinosaur, fingers. Dinosaur, turtle, and sticks. <laughs> that happens. They fight. Okay. With that on the stack, I'm going to tap stick fingers and a watery grave for a black and a green to s- and sacrifice old stick fingers using Azani's ability, and I'll gain a life and draw a card. Next, I'm going to tap five for a card I've never gotten to play before, Urabrask the Hidden. Man, Urabrask wins games on this show. Oh, yeah, he yeah. does. <laughs> Creatures I control have haste. Creatures my opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. No. It's so bad. No. <laughs> I'm going to move to combat now. I'm going to send the Beast, Toski, and Kogla and Yutaro to Shay. And then to Ben, I'm going to send a Samut, Urabrask, and the Jackal. All right, Ben, got any blocks? Yeah, I'll put the Goblin Electromancer in front of Urabrask and take five. And Shay? I am going to block the 7 7 and the 4 4 with two insects. And then I'm going to block Toski with my 2 2 zombie. Okay, so. Uh, then the Goblin Electromancer will die. Ben will take a hit from the Jackal and Samut. You will, Shay will lose two insects. Yep. Oh, we're getting there. Down Eight Commander seven. Ben. <laughs> and uh, Gina will get to search her library for a land and put it on the battlefield with the Jackal. And I get to draw two cards from Toski. Do you have any discarding? I don't. I have exactly seven, so I will pass the turn. Okay, I'll untap. I will cast Nib Mizzet Reborn. Oh my gosh. Okay. I will make an angel. Yeah, it's all five colors. And scry one. Is it just a 4-4 four, four angel? It's a 4-4 four, four flying vigilant. Then I'll also scry one off of Jensen. I will bottom that card. And then Nib Mizzet will resolve, revealing top ten. D Spark. Oh god. Young Pyromancer. Putrefy. Okay, that's two. Mana 
Morphos. <laughs> yeah, you got it, bro. <laughs> That's three. Sacred Foundry, Whirlwind of Thought. That one you can't take because it's three colors. Vindicate. That has to be. It has to be that or D Spark. So we can only have one or, of the two. Enlightened Tutor. Can't take that. Up to eight. Assassin's Trophy. You can take that, but not the Putrefying. And the Blood Crypt. All right, so that wasn't that bad. He can definitely get the Mana Morphos, and then he gets D Spark or Vindicate and Putrefy or Trophy. Okay, I'll pick D Spark, Putrefy, and Mana Morphos. And the, my Angel and Nebmizzet will enter tapped because of Urobrask. I'll cast the Mana Morphos. I'll add white and black to my mana pool. Huh, weird if I do that. Okay, the, multiple I'll, triggers yes. before you draw. You've got a Scry, a Gutter Snipe, and a Storm Kiln Artist. Okay, you all will take two from the Gutter Snipe. Not me. Oh, not not CGB, sorry. He's The fairy's protecting him. 16. I'll make another treasure, and I'll Scry one. I'll keep that on top since I'm about to draw a card. And then I'll draw my card. I will use the Mana Pool Mana to de-spark Aerobrass. Okay, with that on the stack, you've got three triggers. Yeah, yet again, you will all take two, except CGB. <laughs> Third treasure, and I'll, oop, scry again. I'll keep that on top. All right, Herbrask is exiled. I'm gonna discard Putrefy to use Nivmizit's jumpstart ability to jumpstart Faithless Mending back. Okay. And when I discard the Putrefy, I will uh, exile it with Containment Construct to cast it this turn. Okay, so it's in exile waiting to be cast. And Faithful Mending you have to pay the cost of. Pay like that. And uh, that will trigger Gutter Snipe yet again. Two damage. Make a fourth treasure and I'll scry one. It's the same one still. I'll keep it on top. <laughs> then I'll draw two cards. Then discard two cards. I will discard Deflecting Palm. I will not use Containment Construct on that one. And I will also discard Vega the Watcher, but I will use Containment Construct on that one All right, to cast it this turn. Also in Exile waiting to be cast. Now, uh, Faithful Mending also makes you gain two life. Yep. It gets exiled because of okay. Jumpstart. And then I will pay one and two mana from my treasures. Going down to two treasures to cast Vega the Watcher. And it is a flying 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, draw a card. Yuck. That does trigger Jensen. Yep. Uh, Jensen will scry one. I'll keep that on top. I think I'll hold back this turn. <laughs> Go ahead, Shay. Okay. On my upkeep, I've got Out of the Tombs trigger. It's going up to six. Which means I mill six cards. Oh, let's go. There's a dynamo in there. There's some land. Shigeki. Shigeki. <laughs> and an end tomb. Okay, so first I'm gonna pay four for a Sidisi Brood Tyrant. Whenever Sidisi Brood Tyrant enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards. Whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. All right, let's see what you mill Dream Root Cascade, Life from the Loam. And an Agadim's Awakening. No creatures. No creatures. I'm gonna play an overgrown, overgrown tomb. You shotgunning? Yes. <laughs> I'll move to combat. Nashi is gonna go to Gina. Three, four, menace. Nashi just likes me a lot. He sure okay. does. Um, and on attack, I'm gonna use his ability to exile and copy a creature from my graveyard. Cool, so I'm bringing back old stick fingers, and I'm going to make X equal four. Okay, sticky for four. Let's go. Sticky for four. Um, okay, so when I cast the spell, reveal cards from the top of my library. Until you hit four creatures. Four creatures. Go, baby, go. There's one creature. Two creatures. Three creatures, four creatures. All right, so these four creatures are gonna go to the graveyard. When they do, that's gonna trigger Sidisi, but just one time, because it's one instant. So I'll make a two-two black zombie. 
And then these creatures will go to the bottom of my library in random order. Yep, those cards go in the bottom. Still in my attack step. Uh, yes, that's that's three, four menace coming at you, Gina. All right, I am going to block Nashi with Hajar and the Fendorn Elves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the... That's a, it's a 1-1 one, one and a 3-3. Three, three. And a 3-3. Three, three. So I'll have Nashi deal damage to the 3-3 three, three first. Okay. And then that will kill Nashi. And Hajar goes to the graveyard. And Nashi goes to the command zone. Okay, well, that ends my turn. Pass to you, CGB. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I've Welcome. Been, I've been gone so long. All right, I am going to plus my Narsa of the Ancient Way. I'm going to gain two life. I'm going to make a blue mana. I'm going to use it to cast Shadow Rift. This says target creature gains shadow until end of turn. It can only be blocked by other creatures with shadow. Old mechanic, very cool. I'm going to target Narset. This is going to trigger prowess because all creatures I control have prowess now. And I'll draw a card from Whirlwind of Thought. And then I'll draw a card from the Shadow Rift. I'm going to tap two lands and I'm going to cast Snap. And this is going to target the copied stick fingers. So it's just going to exile it because it was a copy. Uh, I am going to have some triggers. I'm going to trigger Prowess on Narset. I'm going to draw from Whirlwind of Thought. I'm going to untap two lands. Um, in response to the target, I will tap it for mana. I'll also tap my CDC for mana to just use this ability. Okay, you're going to sacrifice it, gain one, draw a card. Yep. All right, go for it. Cool. Oh, but that means my snap doesn't untap two lands, Shay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> Foiled. All right, I'm going to play a Scalding Tarn. I'm going to sacrifice it, pay one life, and go get a land. All right, I got myself a basic island, because it's getting scary out here, and I don't want to die. <laughs> Tap five, leave up one. We're going to go for a... Boonbringer Valkyrie! This is a new card. A 4-4 flying first strike lifelink angel with backup one. Backup means I can put a plus one plus one counter on a creature to give it all of these abilities until end of turn. So I'm gonna choose to put that plus one plus one counter on Narsa Enlightened Exile, and she's going to gain flying first strike and lifelink until end of turn. Alright, stuff's gotta die. So I am going to move to combat. And I am going to attack Ben with Narsa Enlightened Exile. And on attack, I can exile a spell from a graveyard and cast it for free. That is six or less. So let's look at these graveyards. It can be from any graveyard. All right, Ben, I'm going to target your Simic Charm. And I am going to give Narsa plus three plus three and another Prowess Trigger. So Narsa is coming at you with Shadow. So you can't block it, and you are taking, uh, I believe that is 10. Yeah, 10. <gasps> In response, mm -hmm. I will discard Death Sprout to Niv Mizzet's Jumpstart ability to cast Deflecting Palm. Deflecting Palm. <laughs> and uh, so exactly how that work? Uh, it says, the next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. If that damage pre is prevented this way, Deflecting Palm deals that much damage to that source's controller. So I got two things. One, there's a trigger from Whirlwind of Thought, uh, and I get to draw a card from casting the Simic Charm. Uh, but just to show you I don't need it, I'm going to cast an Offer You Can't Refuse, and I'm going to counter <laughs> Deflecting yes, Palm. Yes, let's go! And you will make two treasures. <laughs> However, oh. you did put it on the stack, so there are triggers. There's two damage, and there's make another treasure. So we, uh, we've we got to take two, guys. Yep. So I go down to 11. I'm down to 10. And I use my treasures to cast that. Do you have any more cards in your hand? No more cards in my hand. Okay, so yeah, th that gets countered. And yeah, you do make the treasures. I draw another card for Whirlwind of Thought. That is another prowess trigger as well. And, and so- I also get to scry one. You do get to scry one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I already knew what that was. I'll keep it on top. It's really good? <laughs> yeah, <All right>. well, <laughs> lightning greaves. Uh, that's not too bad. All right, so you're going. Narset is a four plus three for the Simic Charm is a seven, eleven, and you so you're taking eleven. Flying first strike, lifelink shadow, commander. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben goes down once again, I right die. on the edge of being cool. I technically also drew that lightning greaves with Vega. 
Because uh, I uh, guess yeah. it from my graveyard, but that is. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Okay, so yeah, the Vega does draw the lightning greaves. All right, so I gain 11 from the hit, so I go up to 22. And I die. And I will move to my end step where I have to discard. I'm going to discard Invasion Mercadia. Go ahead, Gina. How do I follow that? <laughs> uh, crater Hoof, maybe? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, untap. <laughs> um, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to play, I'm going to discard Sokinzan Crucible of Defiance. And because I have three legendary creatures, it's only going to cost me one mountain to do this. Yep. And I will create two 1-1 one, one colorless spirit creature tokens that will have haste until end of turn. Perfectly mm -hmm. done. I think I'd like to see what happens if I play this uh, Blood Braid Elf, which oh, yeah. will cost four. And you cascade, so you uh, flip until you hit a spell that's cheaper than the Blood Braid Elf. All right, so cheaper than four. That's it. There you go. You get a soul ring. A soul. <laughs> Just what I needed. Well, you didn't have to draw it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's true. I appreciate that. This one I'm just going to play because it's fun. Um, I'm going to tap four for <laughs> my very good voice, Minskin Boo. Oh, of course. Nice. Of course. I got to bring him out. You have the hamster? <laughs> no, she doesn't. Do I have the hamster? <laughs> <laughs> I never leave home without Boo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there he is, he's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pay two for uh, Loyal Apprentice. Yeah, that's has, also good. Has haste. How many tokens? <laughs> At the beginning of combat, if I have my commander, I can create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. And the token will have haste until end of turn. CGB, yeah. I know things had just gotten really cool for you. Yeah. I have to make them slightly less cool. I see. So I have to tap a three, and I have to beast within your Valkyrie. Uh, yeah, destroyed. You got it. Oh, sad. Feels bad. I get a 3-3 three, three beastie. I'm going to plus a Minskin Boo so that Boo can feel really strong. And he's a 4-4 four, four now. Yep, I get that. CGB, I'm going to combat now. I believe you. And I'm going to attack you with everything except for my mana dorks. And I'm bringing in the Thopter to be part of the team. Yeah, because of the Loyal Apprentice, yep. Uh-huh, all right, so do the, do the motions. Here's all the tapping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoa. Yep, uh, the 3-3 three, three will block the Kogla and Yadaro. Well, if it did, like I could block the Kogla and Yadaro, but I'd take exactly 22. And I'm a vindictive person, so the 3-3 three, three is actually going to block the Jackal and kill that thing. <gasps> <laughs> but I understand. <laughs> I'm going to be taking all the rest that adds up to 22. And... You are going to draw. How many things entered the battlefield this turn? Uh, uh, the spirits. One, two, three, the four, thopter, five. The blood braid, the loyal apprentice. Six. Minskin Boo, six. So that's six card draws. And then on top of that, you have Toski. So it's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 cards. <laughs> and I'm really dead, so. Um, you made me proud though, honey. Draw a 16. Wow. <laughs> From attacking, too, of all things. Oh. Or da damage. Wow. Jeez. I am going to tap two for Great Henge. I'm going to make a little space for no, it. Just anywhere. There's a good spot. You got two boards to work on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am going to tap Great Henge to play Lightning Greaves. All right, you'll gain two life for tapping the Great Henge. I could use it. And I'm going to discard all of these cards, including Anger. And now that Anger is in the graveyard, all of my creatures have haste. Wowza. Anything else, Gina? Um, it's a regular party over here. What you got? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and go to my turn. Untap on my upkeep. I've got an Out of the Tombs trigger. We're going up to eight Eon counters. Boom. Which means I mill eight. Oh, running out of room. Okay, one. Well, you got Ben's board. Yeah. The guys are dead. Yeah. <laughs> so take over. Six, seven, eight cards. Ooh, shielded. Now I'll draw for turn. So that is a Sidisi mill trigger? Yes, that is right. So you make a zombie. Just one. 
Yep, because it all went at the same time. Cool beans, we got a new zombie. Okay, doing it on my main. I'm going to play Urtai Resurrected. It's a 3-2. When he enters the battlefield, choose up to one. I'm going to choose destroy another target creature or planeswalker. Its controller draws a card. I would like to target your, what is it? Samut? Samu? The commander? Yes, your okay. commander. So destroyed? Um, yeah, I guess so. Pay in four. I don't think I've actually ever played this card, but it's a fact or fiction. Whoa. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm going to reveal the top five cards of my library, and then an opponent, aka Gina, separates those cards into two piles. And then I get to put one pile in my hand, and the other goes to my graveyard. Okay. Remo Sounds fun. <laughs> Revealing five. Needs a removal spell. Needs it to be like two mana. Four. Five. So I've got a uh, Forest, a Fierce Guardianship, a Farseek, an Adrix and Neve, and a Zealot Sanity Flare. I have two piles for you. Okay. Here they are. <gasps> Ooh, the Fierce Guardianship and the Farseek. I'm going to go with this pile. The Forest, the Adrix and Neve, and the Zealot Sanity Flare. These will go to the graveyard. Cool beans. I'll play the Forest as my land for turn. Then... I'm gonna move to combat. You're so close, but you need to get past one creature, Shay. I know. Okay, so in combat, um, I'm just gonna attack you with CDC. It's a 3-3. And on attack, I mill three cards. We get a creature. Do we get a creature? Yes, we do. We did get a creature. All right, so that's gonna make a zombie. That's gonna make a zombie. I'll just take it. I've got this hinge now, and it makes me feel slightly better. <laughs> It's yeah. the greatest henge. It's the greatest henge. <laughs> uh, that's all for me. Your turn. All right. Oh, man. I'm going to untap all my stuff. You'll help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Gosh. So many things. All right. First, I'm going to pay four for Helena and Elena partners. They have first strike and reach. So they enter the battlefield, get a plus one, plus one counter, and you get to draw for great henge. Pretty good. Nice. Next, I'm going to uh, tap Great Henge and Two Forest to play Questing Beast. My life total goes up to draw a card, get a plus one, plus one counter. There you go. Thank you very much. And then I'm going to cackle as I play. <laughs> I'm going to tap seven for Adali Primal Conqueror. <gasps> stop, stop, stop. Oh. <laughs> Tramples onto the battlefield, and each player will <laughs> exile cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. And I can cast any number of spells from among them this way, without paying their mana cost. Trigger. And draw. Draw. And now uh, Shay and Gina each exile the top card of your library. Until we get to a non-land, right? Yep, until you hit a non-land. We got Swift Foot Boots. Yep, and then we've got Buried Alive. So, Gina, if you want to, you can cast Buried Alive and search your library for three creatures and put them in your graveyard. The only one you need is Anger. I don't uh -huh. think it's really worth it. <laughs> okay. So I would just leave that exiled. Uh, the forest goes to the bottom. The Swift Foot Boots you can cast for free. All right, I'm going to play some boots. Boots. I feel like... Someone should be wearing these. I've got all this footwear and no one wearing them. I'm going to uh, plus Minskin Boo and I'm going to give the three plus one plus one counters to Hel Helena and Elena because uh, they have haste and they can do that because of anger. My dinosaur's feet got cold, so I'm going to put lightning greaves on his feet. Oh, nice. cute. And then I'm going to go to combat and I'm going to make another Thopter because of Loyal Apprentice. And then I'm going to put six plus one plus one counters on Boo using Helena and Alana's ability. Shay, I'm going to attack you with everything except for my elves. <laughs> I'm, I'm still going to have three mana left uh, over. Let me help you with all this. <laughs> everything has haste because of anger. <laughs> oh my goodness. So oh wait, you have oh vigilance. You're not moving. I'm going to tap. Elves and Soul Ring to cast Ram Through, and I'm going to be targeting this one right here. Oh, my Zony. Um. And I'm going to use the power of Boo to do it. And Boo is a 10. Mm -hmm. So it's going to it's going to deal damage to you, and the extra is going to go to your face. Ouch. Okay. Yeah, that that happens. That happens. Zony is dead. 
Yep, it was a copy. Exile. So it's exiled, and the extra ram through damage is seven to face. Seven to face, sweet. Love that for me. And there's all that, Shay. <laughs> Can you block enough? Uh, 10 of this is trample right here. Another eight of it is trample right here. <laughs> the questing beast has to be blocked by power three or greater, which I guess you can do with Urtai. And then there's everything else. Yeah, I don't think I have enough to to survive here. Yeah, if you put a if you put ones in front of the most powerful creatures, mm -hmm. one, two, three. Four, and you blocked Questing Beast, mm -hmm. and you blocked two more, mm -hmm. so five and six. You would still take 10, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23 that I can see. Mm -hmm. I think it's more than enough. I'm totally dead. I'm like <laughs> so dead right now. <laughs> Oh, oh, and, and if she survived somehow, post-combat, what would you do with your hamster, Gina? I would throw it at you! <laughs> so I'm ultra mega, super, super dead. Yeah, I need to see I need to see oh, that yes. message, though, to know. Oh, it just says good game. Well, you're <laughs> disappointed in good game. <laughs> Why you no know win? <laughs> oh, look, I'm hot with yes, stars. Yes, look at you. <laughs> that was epic. That was super epic. Jeez. Yeah, I, I, I feel I thoroughly no dead. <laughs> Yes, extremely, extremely dead. Rule for the win. Yes, way to go, Gina. <laughs> Heck yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Well, um, I think now it's time to cut to our Cool Stuff Inc. card of the game. Okay, welcome to the Cool Stuff Inc. card of the game. My card of the game is Nashi, Moon's Legacy, my commander. I really loved being able to pull stuff out of my graveyard. Special mentions to Sir Conrad, old Stick Fingies, and Azani. They were just really great, fun, splashy kind of plays when they when they came in. So yeah, I really, really liked playing this commander. Yeah, you were really right on the edge of the danger zone there a few times. Like it was really close. And Nashi definitely did the reanimator thing. And it got in pretty easily and was kind of hard to kill. Mm hmm Yeah, exactly. Can I actually tell you a couple of cute things about Nashi's backstory? I would love that. So Tamio is Nashi's mom. And so in the lore, Tamio comes to destroy Kamigawa, and now she's like, no, mom, don't do it. And, and she's like, oh, I'm perexionized, I have to. And uh, she ends up just kind of like letting the wanderer ugh, her so that she doesn't have to hurt anyone anymore. And <laughs> the amazing thing is she somehow like uploaded herself to a scroll. Mm. And so she comes back as like, a file that's your mom that you can hug and she's like got a history saved within her so Whoa. your mom is always with you but she's kind of like I don't know dots and you can hug her and she's one of the scrolls and he carries her now with him all the time wow. yeah that's also why now she uh, went from being a black legendary to being a black blue and green legendary because you add in the colors for Tamiya uh, Gina, by the way, has a, a lore show that she's doing on what channel? On uh, Zbex's channel. So at Zbex, uh, it's MTG Storytime with Gina and Zena. And we've done March of the Machine. We're working on March of the Machine Aftermath. And it's really fun on YouTube. And it's a podcast. That sounds delightful. I'm going to have to check it out. And thank you for the awesome lore. That's great knowledge. <laughs> Uh, CGB, what about you? What was your card of the game? Yeah, my card of the game, promo code WORST at CoolStiffInc.com, you guys, to support the show. I'm giving it to my commander as well. I really like Narset Enlightened Exile. My coolest thing that I got to do in this game was uh, Punk Ben out using Shadow Rift <laughs> and uh, countering his sweet oh, deflecting palm technology. But uh, that was by far the most fun I got to have. So I'm going to give it to my commander. And just a shout out to the character, Narset. I'm bummed that she's exiled. I'm bummed that she's desparked. It's not going well, but you know, I'm here for you. I, I love the character. So Gina, what you got? Well, my card of the game has to be my very good squirrel, Toski, because I got to draw so many cards, which gave me a lot of options to punch, punch, punch. Uh, ben, what was your card of the game? Yeah, I really like this uh, commander, niv at Supreme. He made me think differently in this game. Mm. <laughs> very weird for me. But my card of the game was definitely Decimate. I think I did it. I think I, 
I think I casted it on like turn four or something. And I was not expecting that uh, deflecting slot. You the decimated first yourself. Yeah, I did Tasting. it to myself, and then I got to do it again with Niv Mizzet, so oh, that was cool. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> wow, what a crazy game. I feel like a lot happened. There was a lot of cool interaction moments. We were all kind of scary at, at one point. Yeah, we put on a show. <laughs> Hell yeah, we did. Um, well, from everybody here at the Worst Possible Commander Show, thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, that's the best thing you can do for the channel. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. You're, You're cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs>